Good morning, Facebook. Okay, I'm so excited about this topic of self-love and self-care, and I actually was going to talk about this last Friday, but I wound up not going live because it was crazy train and I was exhausted. So I've been thinking about this all week. I'm personally struggling in my own life with this for forever, and so I think this is a perfect time of year to talk about it. So, super glad you're here. When you pop on, say hello so I know that you're here. I brought some water and I've got some coffee and all of my beverages. So anyways, happy Friday. Oh my gosh, Christmas is almost here. This is so crazy. So after Christmas, it's like a freight train with New Year's and New Year's resolutions. And so everyone makes New Year's resolutions. I don't care who you are or if you say you don't, you do. We all do, right? There's something that we all want to get better at. There's something that we have a personal goal for towards that we're all working on. Good morning. Um, and so self-care is something that I really struggle at and I just feel like I'm being selfish. I feel like I don't have time and I find myself falling into this kind of martyr trap where I'm like, I must do, 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 go, 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 get things done all the time. Close the door, please. Thanks. Imagine that. It's hard to do self-care when you have little freaking people underfoot all the time. Anyways. I digress. So anyways, so I've been thinking a lot about this and it's funny when you start doing personal development and how the universe, God, whatever, just starts to kind of like put these things in your path that coincide with whatever it is you need to hear. And so for the last couple of weeks, I keep finding podcasts popping up into my recommendations about self-care, about taking time for you. And then I had a girlfriend who recommended this book, Grace Not Perfection by this amazing unicorn woman, Emily Lee, and she apparently makes planners, which I think I need to get, right, to plan my life, but it's all about self-care and taking time for you and how it's not selfish to take time for you. And it freaking feels so selfish. It feels like the one thing that, it is the one thing I always cut that I'm like, I just don't have time for it. So I started to think about it and how it's not selfish to take care of you. It's really not. It's selfish to not take care of you because if you're not filling your own cup, how can you take care of your people? And as moms and wives and and just women, like we are the thermostat of our family. And if we're stressed the fuck out, our family's gonna be super stressed out, right? Like they all feel your energy. And if you're not filling your cup, if you're not taking time for you, well, guess what? It's gonna vibe into your whole family. So I keep telling myself this, and by coming in here and like, I made some notes and I'm gonna share some thoughts and some amazing quotes, and I'm speaking to myself because I know this is what I struggle with and this is what I need to fix. It's really hard. Are you good self-care givers, takers? I don't know. So um, with New Year's resolutions coming, I was listening to this podcast and she was talking about that, like New Year's resolutions come and so everybody kind of lets everything roll in December, right? It's a survival mode and we're all so busy. We're on this like hamster wheel of like, we got to do this and we got to do that. And we got to check this box and we empty our tanks completely a hundred percent. And then come January 1st, there's supposed to be some kind of magical switch that we just flip. And all of a sudden we're a hundred percent on with our nutrition. We're a hundred percent on with our fitness. We're a hundred percent on with whatever it is you're, you're budgeting. Like, how is that? That doesn't make sense, right? To go from having no, like you got to, it's like training, right? Like you got to start training for it. You can't just all of a sudden be like, okay, I'm a hundred percent in because you're just setting yourself up to fail. You're setting yourself up to fail. So it's important to start, even though this is December and really honestly, we only have one week left in December, but better, better to start now than later, right? So you start little tiny goals and little tiny victories, and then you can start to kind of stack them like building blocks, right? So it makes sense to me. Does it make sense to you? I think so. Okay, so you start small and you layer them in like building blocks. I'm looking at my notes because I had so many great things I want to share with you. I don't want to skip anything. So synonyms for self-care. This is crazy, you guys. Crazy. Okay, so synonyms for self-care. Other words for self-care. Egotism. Self-centered. Self-interest. Selfish. Narcissism. Conceit and vanity. Those are all things that are associated that come up when you Google freaking self-care, self-love, like seriously, those are all negative. And how is taking care of you negative? It's not. We take care of our family. We take care of our spouses. We take care of our animals. We take care of our homes. We take care of everything. And are those things negative? No. Those are things that are just normal, that are expected, that we expect of ourselves, that our family expects, right? And we do it willingly because that's who we are. We're caregivers. But when we don't care for ourselves, 
That's crazy. Sarah, when you don't care for yourself, that's crazy. That's how we get sick. That's how we get run down. That's how we feel depressed. That's how we start to eat our feelings. That's how we just start to like want to go around with ice picks, stabbing people in the jugular. It's so not good, right? It doesn't fit in with our merry and bright attitude. No. So no wonder there's such a negative association with self-care and self-love because all these words are what pop up when you Google self-care and there's nothing dirty about self-care but it's really hard for me to take time. And so no wonder it's easy to skip it. No wonder it's easy to like push it and be like, oh, I'll get to that later. I'll get to that later. It's not just me, right? I think so. I think it's all of us. Okay, so I had this aha moment when I was listening to this podcast and I was reading this amazing book, put it on your list. It's on sale on Amazon, Grace Not Perfection by Emily Lee. Um, and it's like, I... Finally, after years and years and years of struggling with my fitness journey and just feeling like overweight and gross and yucky and bad and angry at myself about not being able to get traction, like I finally had an aha that I'm doing it for my kids. I'm doing it for me, but as a mom, as someone who's busy, who puts other people's needs first, I can like reframe it and be like, okay, I'm going to do this for my kids because I'm teaching them a lesson, right? That it's important to take care of themselves. I'm teaching them not to be quitters. I'm teaching them to persevere even when it's hard. Like when you reframe it, like as a lesson I'm teaching them, well then who am I to not show up to that? I have to show up to that, right? It just makes sense. So I had the same aha with this. I was like, well, taking care of me, self-care, the things I do now, while they're little and learning and watching, it's going to grow them into adults. It's going to grow them into who they are as wives and women and mothers and all that. And if I don't ever create the standard for them, then how will they do it? I can't go around preaching that you need to give yourself grace and you need to take time for you and you need to do this if I don't do it. And I, I admit, like, it's been kind of hollow. I'm telling all my amazing challengers and women in my fitness group to give themselves grace. But I don't ever accept grace for myself. I was I went to my therapy appointment yesterday and I kind of like, bleh, like I puked my whole life, like everything was happening. And I was like, I just feel so stressed out. What's wrong with me? And she's like, she kind of cocked her head. She was like, hmm, so you're human, right? And I was like, oh, me? No, I have, a, I have a superhero cape. I don't have time to be human. I don't have time for that shit. But it's true, right? We're all just human and we're doing the best that we can. And so it starts with us. And so sometimes you have to, you have to fake it until you make it. And so my aha was I did this with my fitness and it worked, right? It became a normal part of my routine. The days I don't work out are days I feel like a crazy person. Like I work out not just not just about weight loss. It's not about it's not about fitting into a certain size or having a certain number on a scale. We don't I don't do scales, you know that's about me. But it's about it's about creating a standard and taking care of me. And if I can't do it for me, then I need to start doing it for them because I'm teaching them a lesson and somewhere along the way it will become habit and it will and it will just become part of my daily routine. You know what I mean? Because I don't do it for me. I don't take the time for me and I need to. I need to and I'm frustrated and I'm overwhelmed and it's this kind of hamster wheel. And if I don't, I am in control of my life. I'm a grown up. Like you guys, things don't magically happen. They don't magically change. We have to change them. We're the drivers of our bus. And so someone's not gonna show up. Santa's not gonna come to your house and be like, Brenda, Alisa, Carolyn, take time for you. No, no, you have to make it happen. You have to fit it into your day. So be a little bit selfish and put yourself first. The world's not gonna end. Life isn't gonna stop. Your house isn't gonna crumble. Your kids aren't gonna cry. If anything, they're probably going to feel relief that mommy is no longer a crazy psychopath person because she's taking time to fill her own cup. It's just like when you're on the airplane, you get on the airplane and they go through you know, the safety bulletins and stuff and they always say, parents, Put your oxygen mask on first and then help the children or the people next to you, right? Like, that's just normal. If you have your own oxygen mask, if you're taking care of you, then you can care for everyone else. But you can't if you run yourself into the ground. And it's just who we are. Like, I don't know when that became kind of like a badge of honor. Like, busy. Like, you're so busy. You're so stressed. And you ask a friend, how are things going? Oh, my God, I'm so busy. I do it all the time. Oh, my God. Why is that good? We shouldn't be running around with like that, like a badge. Like, I'm busy. I'm making shit happen. No. And I don't like that about where I'm at. I want to get better at that. I feel frustrated and overwhelmed. And I don't even know why I feel so frustrated and overwhelmed. I don't know what I'm so freaking busy doing, but I feel busy all the time. It's time to just take it down a level, right? And reprioritize. And with the fresh new year, it's a great time to do that. It's a great time to like get our priorities straight and refocus. So put your oxygen mask on first. Think about how you show up to your life. 
this was a big one for me. Like, think about how you show up to your life, how you show up to your marriage, like how you show up to your spouse. Like, are you taking time to fill your own cup so that you're better at being you? Are you showing up completely ragged out at the end of the day, stressed the fuck out, and you're just a Krabby Patty? How do you show up to your kids? <clears throat> are you taking time for you? Are you taking 10 minutes to, like, eat your candy in the bathroom or hidden in the closet or whatever, right? We've all been there. We've all done that where you're just, like, hiding to get a few minutes of peace so that you can go out and be with them and be better. And that's okay. Like, I don't think we should have to hide that. I think this is something that we should shift in the new year in 2017. It's going to be our freaking year. And we're going to be like, this is okay. This isn't selfish. This is acceptable. I'm going to take some time for me and I'm going to be better. And I'm not going to hide it because why is it dirty? Why, like, going to the doctor, doing all these certain things we do, eating, like, these aren't things that we feel guilty about, right? These are things that are necessary to our well being, to feeling 100%. And I feel like, for me personally, self care is always the thing that it's selfish and dirty. Like, I don't have time. I don't have time for that shit. I don't have time for that. I have things to do. There is laundry to fold. There is like children to entertain or to feed. Actually, I take that back. I'm not into entertaining my kids. I'm like, I have three of you. Go play with yourselves. I'm not here to play. My husband thinks that's sad, but whatever. Right? Anyways. Okay. So back on track. So think about how you show up when you're tired, when you feel down, when you feel run down. Like, are you showing up 100% to your life? Are you? Are you your best? When you skip you, how do you show up? You're, when you're, you're just shorting yourself, you're robbing yourself of your creativity, you're, you're robbing yourself of your ability to recharge, you're robbing yourself of energy, and more than likely, if you're like me, you have this constant reel of thoughts, all this shoulding, I should be doing this, I should be doing that. It's just like on the days I skip my workout, I spend so much time thinking about it and like saying I need to get it done, I could have just freaking gotten it done. It's a total waste of energy. It's a total waste of energy. So plan it. How do you do it? How do you change things, right? I don't know. I'm not, not an expert, but I know this is something that I really struggle with and I'm, I'm devoting to myself. I'm going to do this because I'm worth it. I'm the thermometer of my household. And if I don't take time to fill my own damn cup, I'm just going to become a serial killer. And that's terrible. No one wants to go visit mommy in jail. Santa doesn't live in jail, right? So how do we do it? I think that we plan it in. I think like I've started to go back to my to-do list because I felt so hamster wheel and so crazy and I don't want to. So I want to be purposeful. I want to be intentional. I want to get the shit done that needs to get done. And it, I think it's also a good way to be able to see whether or not what you're doing, if it has purpose. Like, is there benefit to this or is it just a time suck? So I'm going to start small because I'm not, I want to start small so that I can make this sustainable, right? And if it's too big of a goal, like I was listening to a podcast, she's like, take an hour. I'm like, who has time for an hour? I don't have time for an hour. 10 minutes, I can do. I can do 10 minutes. I can do five minutes. I can break up two, 10, I can break up 10 minutes. So I'm doing five minutes in the, in the morning and five minutes in the evening. And when I, I've been going to therapy and one of the things we talk about is meditation and all the really successful people all say meditation. And I have a hard time slowing down. Shocking. I know, right? But it's true. I have a hard time slowing down. And so I know meditation would be so good for me, but it's that and journaling are two things I avoid like the plague. Avoid. But, you know, now that I'm going to therapy, she's like, you've got to meditate. So I've been meditating at night and I know that's not the best ideal time to do it. But hey, some is better than none. This is my life philosophy and I'm going to fit it in where it fits in and I'm not going to beat myself up about it. So I've been meditating at bedtime and it's helping me sleep better. If only it would help my children sleep better, but it's helping me sleep better, right? And that matters. That totally matters. So start small and start looking at your day. Like where can you take, where can you maybe get off Facebook? And take five minutes, like before you even plug into social media, before you have your coffee in the morning, take five minutes for you and close your eyes and listen to the silence or whatever, right? It's so hard to stop your squirrel brain. And I don't know how to stop it because I'm still a squirrel, still a squirrel, but baby steps and you have to start somewhere, okay? So all these things, taking time for you, it's all about figuring out the happiest version of you, figuring out what makes you sane because you don't want to be exhausted you don't want to be disconnected from your life because if you're like me then you start to to feel disgruntled and I start to like what's the word I start to like um begrudge my kids and them and like taking time for them and that's I know I'm going to regret that I regret that currently like I want to enjoy them I want to be more present but it's really hard when you're not getting sleep when you're not filling your all when you're not checking off all of your needs like eating eating to fuel yourself and you're not getting enough rest and you're not taking time to fill your own freaking cup. <sighs> Beating my own hand. So baby steps, start small, 
okay? And then layer them in. That's how habit, that's how habits are formed, good and bad. You start small and you just start to layer them on top of each other. So let's focus on good habits for 2017 and let's add in self-care, self-love, five minutes, twice a day. I can do that. Can you do that? Will you commit to do that? If you commit to do that, I want you to drop a comment or an emoji or something below so I know that you're with me because I know I'm not just talking to myself. Like I know you feel this way because I see it on social media and I see it on, it's popping up in my podcast, it's popping up into my freaking library, like suggestions. Other women are struggling and we've got to figure out how to make this part of our normal life so that we don't feel at the end of 2017, we don't feel so freaking frazzled. We don't feel so freaking overwhelmed. So creating a self-care routine. What is it that gives you pleasure, make, gives you joy? What is it that makes you happy? And I feel like figuring out a self-care routine, that sounds complicated and like I don't have time for that and all the excuses that are really easy to fill in the blank. So think about the things that make you happy. So I was thinking about it. What makes me happy? This makes me happy. Painted nails. Totally, totally frou frou, totally like whatever, but it makes me happy. It brings me joy when my toes are painted and my nails are painted. And I don't go get manicures and pedicures because I'm a cheap ass and I don't, A, it's a time thing. I just feel guilty, feel guilty spending the money. But I can paint my own nails and so I've been trying to do that more often. I've been, you might notice I have different colors. So, um, yeah, so it's just fun. That makes me happy. Fresh flowers make me happy. And I used to put that on my husband and be like expecting him to bring me fresh flowers, but that was kind of like, you know, that can be a tricky thing because sometimes they don't and then you're, they're mad at you and they bring you fresh flowers and it's like, well, that was dumb. Like, I'm already pissed at you. Like, these flowers are, <laughs> it doesn't work now. Like, be proactive, honey, honey. But I realized, why am I waiting for him to make me happy? I can make myself happy. I will pick up the, the bunch of sunflowers and I will keep them in my house. They bring me joy. They make me happy every time I see them. It's small little things. It doesn't have to be dramatic, crazy, over-the-top things. So, reading for pleasure that's one that makes me so happy and I got away from it for so long and so I, I've, I've been going to the library. I always go to the library pretty regularly and I get like new personal development to listen to in my car and books for the kids and stuff like that but I've been starting to grab more books for me and I have this big stack. I just shared on Instagram a photo. It's like, I don't know, eight, eight books. I don't know. Apparently I'm waiting for a blizzard to hit Arizona. Like when am I going to have time? But I'm going to make time because it's important and it fills my cup and it makes me happy. It's just about making that decision that I'm going to freaking do it, right? I have this quote, it's written on the plan, on the front of my day planner. I wrote it uh, in January of this last year and I've been looking at it and I looked at it today as I was making all my notes for this, for this, whatever, coffee talk thing. It's by Max Dupree and it is, we cannot become what we want by remaining what we are. And that applies to so many different areas of our life. Like, if you want to change, it starts with you. It's not a magical thing. Santa's not going to stuff it in your stocking. You can't wait for your husband to show up and be like, make it happen. Like, it starts with us. And we have to decide, make the decision to be proactive and squirrel up, like, take us some time for ourselves. There's nothing wrong with that. So we cannot become what we want by remaining what we are. Truth. And I don't like who I am right now. I don't like feeling stressed out. I don't like wanting to scream into a pillow. I don't like... I don't like the thought that this entire December I've had this constant reoccurring thought where it's like, I just need this to be over and then I can slow down and enjoy it. And that makes me mad because I love December. It's such, an, it's such a cycle and I just have to like remember that I'm the example for my family and I don't have to run myself into the ground to feel worthy or to feel like I've gotten enough done or to feel like I've checked all my boxes. Like I can slow down and take time to enjoy my, to enjoy my life, right? So important. Okay, so I had a few other quotes that I thought were really like, oh, yeah, and I want to share them with you. So another one was, here's the thing about doing it all. Even if you can do it all, because like you're a freak of nature, which we can't all do it all, you can't do it all well. And so it's okay to surrender some things. It's okay to be like, you know what, this isn't making my heart sing. It's okay. It's okay to realize you're in a different season. It's okay to realize this year isn't going to be the same as last year. It's okay to say that might have been a tradition, but right now it doesn't bring me joy. It just brings me stress. And to like narrow some shit down. It's okay. I'm giving you permission. If you need permission, I'm giving that to you right now. You cannot do, ev you can't, what is it? What is it? You can't do it. Even if you can do everything, you can't do it all well. So just choose what brings you real joy. And another thing I, I, that I was like, this is so true, it was about you might think that you're doing this selfless thing by putting everyone else's needs first, but really you're just sabotaging your own efforts by not filling your own freaking cup. That was awesome. So if you don't know 
If you don't know what to start, where to start at with self-care, self-love, think about, do a little life inventory. And that sounds like a big word. That sounds complicated, but it doesn't have to be. Think about what you're missing. Think about what it is that brings you joy. What makes you feel alive? What makes you feel happy? What makes you feel inspired? What makes you feel like, yeah, I want to do more of that. Think about that and make a dump. Make, just make a brain dump where what, I love this. I love painting, having painted nails. I love getting a massage. I love I love having a yard guy come so I don't have to stress about my freaking yard and it's magically perfect and it smells good and I just, it just appears, it just happens. Like think about the things that bring you joy, that ease your mind, that fill your cup, think about those. So that's my call to action for all of you today is it's a couple days before Christmas and we're all following and probably some of us are feeling a little stressed maybe. Do a love dump, think about all the things that bring you joy, think about the things that you wanna to start to incorporate right now, or you're going to wait until January 1st. But again, it's kind of like training. Like we can't all of a sudden decide to run a marathon January 1st if we haven't been doing any training. And it's a little late. I get it. Like we only have one week left of December, but let's be real. Like you can't make this huge list of to-dos for January 1st because you're setting yourself up for failure and then you're going to be discouraged and it's a self-defeating pattern. So think about a couple things that bring you joy, a couple things you can start to incorporate in your life and tell yourself, I'm telling myself, that I'm not going to guilt myself into it. I'm not going to say, it's not going to be the first thing I, I cut when life gets crazy. I'm going to choose me. I choose me with my fitness. I choose me with my nutrition. But I'm going to choose me to make me, the things that make me happy. I'm going to choose the things that bring me a little bit of joy. I'm not throwing my family under the bus. I'm talking five, ten minutes a day, right? So if you're all in, if you're going to do this with me, and by all in, I mean committing to 10 minutes a day. Can you commit to 10 minutes a day of taking care of you, of filling your cup so that you're no longer on the hamster wheel of death? Will you do it? If, you're, if, you're, if you commit, I want you to comment below. I want you to schedule it into your day in the new year. I want you to put it on your to-do list, and I want you to share how it goes. I want you to drop a comment on one of my videos or message me or something. Let me know how it goes because by you doing that, you're not only going to stay accountable to yourself, but you're going to be the nudge that I need because I'm not perfect. I struggle with this. This is why I'm making this freaking video because I get, I feel so convicted and I know that I'm struggling so hard in this area of my life. I'm not filling my cup. I'm not being the best I can be when it comes to taking care of me. And we're all in this together. It's all about getting better every day. No one's perfect. No one's a rock star. I'm not asking you to suddenly spend an hour a day. I'm just asking you to show up to your life and take care for you, take care of you, and fill your own cup. That's all I'm asking. So let me know how it goes. Let me know if you're in. Are you in? Are you gonna do it with me? I know you can. If you don't already, click the follow button so you get alerted when I come on here. I don't come onto this page as much as I probably should, but I'm gonna change that in 2017. I'm gonna share how it's going with me, and I wanna hear how it's going for all of you. So you are the drivers of your own bus, my friend. You get to dictate how your life goes doesn't magically happen. Jesus isn't going to show up in your life and make it happen. Santa's not going to show up and make it happen. Your husband's not going to show up and make it happen. You have to decide that you're worth it, that you're going to put yourself first, that you're going to take put on your oxygen mask before you take care of everyone else and all the other things in your to-do list. Because really, all the stuff on your to-do to -do, to -do list is fluff. Your family just wants you, and they probably want you in your sanest, happiest, best self. So if that means not freaking decorating cookies, or if that means not running around and looking at 500 different streets of lights, that's okay. They want you. You want you, right? Show up to your life. Be the best you you can be, and stop freaking beating yourself up. So 2017, 10 minutes a day of taking care of us. I'm committed. Are you? Let me know.